the Battle of Pack Mates, and welcome back to another episode of Star of the Commander, where I'm Prize I'm Adam Roll Tarek on the Battleship Thunderfang, as we continue our campaign against the Hydran Star Kingdom, and last time, we decided to smash a bubble into a planet, and the planet flinched. That's right, we managed to siege out the planet of 213, still not quite ours, although we did succeed in a planetary assault using a bubble ship, which was pretty interesting. I didn't think we could actually pull it off, but hey, the pilot decided that it really, really needed to kill a pseudo frigate. So with that in mind, we're going to set out and just continue to do a little bit of work. We are pretty badly damaged, but if we can pick up a nice, easy mission here, we can get most of our repair work done. And that's what my first plan is to do. I really don't want to go all the way back home because it's quite the trip, and uh, we have to go through quite a bit of territory, which is difficult to travel through. The space in that area is unstable. So let's red alert and increase speed. Let's see what kind of damage we're dealing with. Oh boy. Uh, we still have two ESGs that are damaged. Well, the only ESGs that are damaged. And we have some repairs to power. We're down about four points from where we should be. Uh, I'm going to chug along anyway. I mean, we are not fully charging things. So maybe that works. All right, let's check out to see who we've got with us today. We're being escorted by... That's not right. Oh, that's because that button we need... The Angler, who is apparently... Oh, it's the Triple G-type Plasma Torpedo Destroyer design. I'm quite a fan of it. As well as Edge's Wager. So the Pirate's currently working with us on this operation against a single... I think that's an NHM? Can't really see it across the gorgeous nebula in the background. It's an LNHM-1X. All told, it's a light cruiser. It might have a pretty interesting amount of firepower, but I don't think we have too much to worry about from it. We should be able to handle it with no problem at all. So let's just get our systems fully patched up here by the time we actually make it to him. And maybe we'll be able to hit him with 120 damage. Because right now we are down 40 of that 120 damage, which is pretty significant. So we're just going to drift in nice and cool. Like, don't need to go crazy with anything. We are going to kick our electronic countermeasures up to maximum power. That way they can't see what's going on. And we'll also send the forward shield at maximum reinforcement value just to take on any sort of firepower he's got. Light cruisers like this, we haven't really seen them use too many of their hellbores on these things. They tend to be carriers when we run into them, but maybe the LNH is a completely different design concept. Maybe we're about to run into a brick. Although, if this keeps up, then Edge's Wager over there is going to get there first. And if he does, well, he might be able to handle it. He does have a pretty interesting amount of firepower. I mean, that's four Chi-type plasma torpedoes. That's 80 damage right there, plus a pair of photon torpedoes, because someone decided they wanted to be different. I don't think I quite approve of that kind of armament mixing. The plasma torpedo's optimal range is going to be fired at about 10. Photon torpedoes have a decent range of 8, but they prefer to be closer. So, and it's 8 damage compared to, you know, 10. Or no, 20 damage, I'm sorry. Who does 10 damage with a heavy weapon? I'm not really sure. So are you actually going to beat him? Or no, he launched his, uh, he launched a while was and yep, he is maximum on the fusion cannons. Anybody who gets close to him is going to have a bad day. What is that, three, five fusion cannons in total? Not bad for a light cruiser. And the combat actually is still going by the time we make it there. I'm going to be kind of surprised. Although we are fully patched on power, so we're good there. Let's check out our energy reserves. Yeah, let's start zapping the shield budget, see if we can't get in there. Save the uh, edges wager from having to work too hard. And wow, the, the capacitor is just not charging up all the way. Because it doesn't think it needs to, but I wish I could tell the capacitor. No, just charge it to maximum levels. Unless the batteries are located on the ESG itself, which, you know, that would make sense. So let's keep on cruising on in here nice and, well, relatively slow. We're about to hit 24, so it's not super slow. <clears throat> Once we get in range, we'll bubble up, knock him over, and completely destroy him. That's the plan at any rate. We'll find out if we can pull that one off. Or if, uh, you know, Angler will kill him first, because Angler has 60 damage worth of plasma torpedoes right there. There he goes, and does he have, yep, he still has his wild weasel. Oh, no, he didn't. I thought for a second I was seeing him slow down, but he did not. Oh, he just took that on the face. Uh, come on, is it almost fixed? I'd like it to be. I think we use the phasers only, then. Uh, disruptors first, up. Hey, disruptors did it. Good job. Everybody, we're proud of you. Oh, we still have to... Forgot, the main point of this mission was to go after the listening post. So, okay. Green alert. And all engine power. And maximum speed of time. You guys can sit there and do whatever that is that you do. They are pirates, after all. Perhaps I shouldn't be dropping the shield. They may turn on me. You can never trust pirates. They're far too dangerous. So cruise on in here. Steal the information. Our ESG should be done by the time. Yep, it's done. It's done and ready and turned on automatically. Green alert. Reading data, and then we'll pull on out and leave. Apparently the maximum speed we can hit, we're engine limited, is uh, 30.5. 
which is a little bit sad. I mean, we are a battleship, so you can't expect super high speeds anyway, but still. Being able to hit that 31 shouldn't seem to be that hard. Although maybe it's an additional warp factor. Not really sure how much time until we're actually off of this map, until we leave all of this behind. Not much longer indeed. So yeah, if you ever want to get a decent amount of ship, a decent amount of firepower on a ship, uh, show me the yeah, Edge's Wager. I actually kind of like this. I mean, I'm not super thrilled about the Photon Torpedo, but everything else on that ship is pretty interesting. It's not mostly well endowed with phasers. It's got a similar problem to the Scimitar had, where it had a really powerful main gun, but then didn't have anything to back that up. But still, that that's definitely a way to play. Come on, neutralize this tile. I want it. According to the data, the Hydrogens are currently gathering ships to, uh, from other empires to stand against us, so there could be a surprise reverse in our near future. So we're mostly fixed up. We don't have any uh, armor, obviously. That's been completely torn off. But our power systems and our weapon systems are back at full power. So we should be able to knock some things off. We're going to avoid the asteroid base assault. I don't really want to get involved in something like that. Oh, far too dangerous. Please, no. We will instead go on a MET time patrol. And we'll just sit here. Access speed time. We have time. Just chilling. Turning on some tunes. Just have a good time. Relax. Chill. Although I am getting a little bit tired of that nebula. Not because it's not a beautiful nebula, but more because I can't read on it. Luckily, the enemy is off in this direction, so we should be able to do something about that. Maximum electronic countermeasures to make him fight us for it and give us a full forward shield firepower. Uh, I think we're dealing with a monarch. Yes, we are. A monarch is indeed the target. It's found out exactly what we're dealing with here. We don't really need to know. It doesn't matter. Uh, two, four, six, eight. So he's the carrier. I think, anyway. Fairly certain that's the case. So we will go three, set to two, make it a little bit wider. Phasers set to overload. Disruptors will keep normal because disruptors are always useful to have on normal. And start giving us some speed here. Let's start tapping into that budget. Here comes the fire and quite a bit hit. I think that was every single one. He nailed us despite the fact that we had our defenses up. How many fighters did you just deploy? <clears throat> About ten. So that's not good. We would not be able to destroy him if we just went for a full blast here. In fact, if we get too close to him, he is going to rip us open. So we'll start flinging some firepower his way. And I'm going to chunk right through those shields. And if we keep away from him just a little bit... Come on, get that shield away. Get that shield away. Uh, darn, we just lost the shield. He has used the full power. Uh, phases are just about ready for the follow-up. So normal mode. Start shooting things down. Come on, kill it, kill it, kill it. There we go. Okay, all fighters are out of this combat. So now we get to focus on him. Now, we did punch a hole through his shields at 42 damage, although we did take a little bit of damage ourselves. And we don't have armor. He does. So we got to keep that damage port side away from him while we go back to try and charge up our ESGs. And that's going to take time. Going to drop a mine, start being a little bit proactive. Cruising along at 17 is not helping things. I need a priority placed on that shield, on that electronic countermeasure. We cannot afford damage. Unfortunately, he has the weapon that is perfectly designed to be able to exploit small gaps like that. And his shields are already up. Disruptor, please. Fire out the stern. You do nothing else except for that, so you may as well get involved in this fight. And another mine. <clears throat> oh, wow, he decided to just go through that. Interesting. I would not have done that. Uh, ESGs are still not charged, but we do have a decent amount of charge rate going on, right? Please tell me yes. No, no, we don't. We are sapping too much into the actual drive systems. So disruptors are about to be ready again. Or four disruptors at any rate. I gotta get that rear shield reinforced just as soon as we can. Unfortunately, we don't have any shields at all. And he's traveling at a speed of 25. Jeez. He's just cruising along. For a Monarch Battleship, that's pretty impressive. Especially because I need to build some distance so I can get around to bring my bow onto him. Because that's where we'll deal the real damage here. He's within a distance of 10. Give him some disruptor fire. Just a little bit. So that'll make him back off. Maybe flinch for a little bit. ESGs. ESGs are good. Okay, full power. We're gonna make a nice tight theme. Well, not beam. Bubble. So let's bring all the ship around. I hope I don't hit my own mine. That would be embarrassing. Couple of mine there. Let's see what I can force out of him. Alright, shields back to a forward reinforcement. Because it's time to get involved. Nope, we're not going to be able to make that turn. We just do not turn hard enough in order to pull this off. Can I force you into a mine at least? Yeah, no? I'm just trying to push him out a little bit so I can get my bow on. I don't want to take a two-thirds chance on this, because that's just too dangerous. Disruptor's firing a little bit. He's got a better gun for this. He flat out does. Another mine. See what you're going to do with that one. He just has better weaponry to do this kind of thing. 
If I keep up in this turn, he's going to crunch me down and he knows it. Okay, so are you pulling away? Is this my opportunity? I think it might be. We may have to plow our own mine. But that's okay. We can deal with that. I think I got an angle for this. I think. We, we have pulled out a little bit. But I think I can take this now. We should be able to get bow on. That'll allow us to start engaging. And yeah, again, we're going to hit our own mine. That's fine. Especially if I can get the bow shields on, because the mine is only 10 damage. I think I'm going to hit forward or forward starboard, which ain't great, but it'll work. Yeah, forward starboard took the hit, but that's okay. Ishii is full power. Phasers on overload. Disruptors ready for an opening. So, disruptors. Get ready with the phaser follow-up. And open to fire immediately. And we did a decent amount of damage to him. Unfortunately, we had to plow his mine, and he knew it. So how are we doing here? Uh, not, well, we're power systems are still all right. That's pretty interesting. Uh, we've lost a phaser and an ESG, so that's not terrible, actually. We did knock 196 damage off of him. Do I still have pseudo-forgets? I do! Haha! <laughs> I'd forgotten. I thought we had all these dis these dead, but looks like they're not, so we'll get them on the attack. So our pseudo-forgets are now in a pretty good position to follow up. He's pretty badly mauled, actually. Took out his forward shield, took out... I think both of his forward shields are down. Well, the forward and the forward port and forward starboard. Although he still is putting out enough large enough broadsides to knock down fighters at, what was that? 13. Jeez. He's just focused on my pseudo frigates. Okay, how's the ESGs going? About half power. That's okay. Disruptors, you got anything? A little bit. May as well cast some firepower. Yeah, his entire forward, uh, forward half is off. So that'll actually put us in a pretty nice position. Phasers are fully charged, ready to go once again. How's the shield generator? Nothing. Okay, we lost the pseudo frigate, but he wasted a lot of firepower to do that. ESG is full power. All additional weapons, although we fired a bit too early. Got him. So it cost us a pseudo frigate to do, which is 220. That's that's not cheap, but we took him out. So in the interest of trying to save the sector of the galaxy from kingdoms as an empire. We are doing all right, and if we take it, then we'll have our entire rear line take- Oh, we just got promoted to Fleet Admiral! Nice! And that gave us an additional something like 3,500 prestige or something like that. So, congratulations everybody! We are now the top-ranking Admiral in this entire Navy, inside our gigantic battleship, which is quite badly damaged and quite out on the limb. Uh, we are squaring off against uh, another fairly large cruiser. I will read it shortly, but let's get some repairs underway and we're going to actually slow down. Uh, today we're being escorted by a B-11 battleship carrier. Wow. I don't think these were ever actually built in the lore. I think only the B-11s were planned. The B-11Vs I don't think ever actually got off the line. I'm also pretty sure the Trek Yards did an episode recently about the B-11. It might have been the B-10. I forget. I'll have to go back and watch because it was fun. It's always interesting when they rip things apart. So this is an MMV. I am fairly confident this is the Dreadnought carrier. It's not the battleship carrier, but it's their dreadnought carrier, probably equivalent to the space control ship. And it is not fun, because it's going to have a lot of fighters, and dealing with fighters is always painful. So we'll kick our ECM and our shields up to a maximum level. I'm a little concerned about the uh, about the ESG itself being down, but hopefully we should be able to make something work out of that one. Uh, we're actually going to drop our pseudo frigates on defense mode this time. Don't need them to be super hyper-aggressive, I just want them around to be a little bit defending. And to be honest, we may be getting rid of the ship sometime soon. Um, we kind of do want to switch over to a faster, more aggressive style, rather than this giant plodding behemoth. Because we want to be able to, you know, dive on top of somebody and just ram everything apart. And one of the ways you do that is you get inside an X-type heavy cruiser. <clears throat> that can be a little bit difficult to get to at this stage in the game, because, you know, we're in a battleship and we're going down to a heavy cruiser. But hey... I think it'll be more fun because we might have more speed off the bat instead of you just standing still at the very beginning of the match. Alright, so we're up to a decent amount of speed. We're again going to tell him the most important thing in your life is the electronic countermeasure system because otherwise things just get painful. And we're going to increase the speed time. Just going to take us a little while to actually get there. Send a probe. May as well. Cost us a moment as we figure out. Yep, there we go. And slow back um, the speed of time. So he has deployed his fighters. But I don't think he's deployed his fighters in a way to aggress against me. They really appear to be focusing on the B-11, which, if that's the case, then we can just go full offense. Now, granted, that B-11 is a heck of a lot more dangerous than I am. At the end of the... 
Hmm, maybe is maybe not. I mean, we both have disruptors as a primary heavy weapon. Is the B-11 battleship more powerful than a normal battleship of another nation? That's an interesting question. I would like an actual answer to that. Uh, we may have to slow down a bit. No, we're just going to chase him down. We're coming after you. We are the giant Indiana Jones bu uh, bubble. Boulder. All right, ESGs are on. Everybody clear out. Don't be too close when this thing goes off, because uh, it'll be painful. Uh, you guys are immune to my bubble because you're friendly. I don't know how that works. Does that work in tabletop? Are friendly units immune to the bubble? Uh... <laughs> oh, nice. That was 276 damage in one shot. That right there is Romulan territory for how much damage you can deal to somebody. No ifs, ands, or buts. We just mauled him. There ain't much ship left. There can't be. I'm surprised you had enough firepower to take out one of my pseudo frigates. I'm also annoyed that you had enough firepower to take out one of my pseudo frigates. Seriously, what is packing your firepower at this point? I hit you with over 300 damage at this point. And you are just still chugging along. Disruptors? No, still charging. Give us some time. The Vizier. Oh, Vizier, you're having a bad day, aren't you? Good. Good, you killed a pseudo frigate of mine. That cost me 220 prestige. Yes, your ship is probably worth about six or seven thousand uh, BP, six or seven thousand prestige, but you cost me two hundred and twenty, and I'm not happy about that. So we're gonna curl back on in, see if we can't get on top of them. We do, after all, have enough. Uh, we could turn it on. I'm not gonna bother though. Disruptors, everything can get involved. Unfortunately, not dealing off damage. We're only doing a speed of seven because it takes us time to charge everything. The ship was not designed to go first fast. Shattered. Wonderful. Oh, their enemy ship's on scope, so green alert. All right, guys, come on home. Returning. And you too. Returning to base. Get back to the vessel. Because until you get back to the ship, I can't go at maximum speed. Actually, maybe I can influence you to turn on back faster. And come on, come on, come on. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so let's just go max power. We don't need anything else. The Klingons are all done. Thank you for your assistance in this matter, sir. I no longer require you, so you can go back doing whatever. Droit Slayer? You would name a B-11 battleship Droit Slayer? What is a droit? I don't understand that one. Maybe it's a droit? No. No, they wouldn't make that pun. I don't think he took too much damage in this fight at all. He probably lost his forward shield just to a little bit of firepower, but nothing that really damaged him too badly. Now reading data. And once we read the data... Come on. Data transfer complete. Okay, goodbye. We came, we saw, we conquered, we stole the data, and we're gone. And hopefully this data will leave us to lead us to a surprise reverse in the near future. That way we can uh, kick enemy button. Although, hopefully we're also steadily checking our way through the lost colony vessels that apparently have been just plaguing our efforts all across the galaxy. It's one of the things that's keeping us away from attacking their primary planets. The other thing that's keeping me from attacking their primary planets is we don't really have a way to break planets easily. Like we did it last episode, but that is not the normal. That is very dangerous, and I do not think we would pull it off again if we tried. Unless the AI gets glitched and, like, shoots at something unimportant again. Yeah, pulling that off would not be easy. So let's cruise on back home. Because I think we do need to go home. We have taken this tile, which will be important. Uh, this basically cuts them out from another pretty major chunk of their empire. <clears throat> It's just been something in my throat all day today. Yeah, their their empire used to stretch all of this, and they are just down to this little tiny area. Now, granted, they do have two, uh, two colonies here and here, but I'm not sure how much longer they can hold. I mean, they are certainly under a lot of pressure. This tile's under a ton of pressure. Let's see what we can do attacking this tile under a ton of pressure. It could be bad. It could be fantastic. We'll find out. Red alert and sit still. <laughs> Oh, that, that does kind of amuse me on some levels. As we just red alert and then just don't move. Because now we got to wait. And today we're being escorted by IKV Deft Slayer. As well as the Raker. And the Raker does not look to be all that impressive to me. It is a CAX. Oh, this is what we used to consider was a good ship. That's a heavy cruiser. And the, De <laughs> the Deft Slayer is an HF5 XC2. So it's an alphabet soup war destroyer. And it's got a lot of missiles and a decent phaser complement. Honestly, my money would be on the Death Slayer if the Death Slayer and the Raker had to fight. 
All right, what are we dealing with here? It is a PICX. No idea what that is. Doesn't really matter though. Oh, we've got another ship. It's another heavy cruiser. It's an RNX. I'm going to guess the RNX is the more dangerous target. The reason why I guess that is because the X on the RNX is capitalized, which means they started building the hull and then realized, hey, here's all this brand new technology. Do something with it. And so they did. Whereas the small X is, hey, we have all this new technology. Um, replace the phasers and maybe add in a little bit more power. So we will set up our electronic systems as required. And again, priority to that ESG or not the ESG, but ECM, because that ECM will keep you alive. Oh, all the terrors out there. The one thing that will keep you alive is the enemy not being able to hit you. So we're going to dive on top of the RNX first. If we can deal enough damage to him and kill him, we can then turn around and deal with the PIC. Now, if the PIC, uh, the PIC is a, uh, a carrier of any description, which I don't think he is just by looking at him, uh, then the Death Slayer will have an easy time of him. No, no, it is not. He launched two fighters. So the Death Slayer could have a little bit of difficulty on this one. The Raker, however, is just flat out of glass here. He will get destroyed, I assume. It is a larger ship, so maybe we're wrong. Maybe he would... How many fighters you got? You've got six. Uh, that's still a dangerous number, and they're killer B3s, so they are really dangerous. Uh, we're going to go max ESG, because I don't think the fighters have prioritized me. No, he's ignoring me. He's ignoring the gigantic boulder about to smash into him. Oh, is the Raker a pseudo frigate tender, or is that just two? I thought it was like four or something. No, it's only two. Who just high energy turned? Come on, come back towards me. I have to actually kill you, and in order to do that, you need to get near me. Which you are not doing. Come on, high energy turn in my direction. See, I'm dangerous. Look, I just took your shields down to red. You need to turn into... Seriously? Are we just going to chase this guy down? Oh, as long as uh, the enemy's behind us. Fire disruptor right back. Apparently not an arc. Oh, there it goes. It took it a moment to figure out what was going on. Come on, get back closer to me. I will chase you at full power, and I can. Don't think I won't. No. Eh, inexorable is not going to get close enough. He's going to pull away at the very last second. Oh, no, we won't. Full power, full power. All phasers now. Got him. Alrighty, so that's why you don't get close to a battleship. Because <laughs> the amount of damage that we can put down is pretty considerable. HMS Testament is the next target of our attentions. How is the Death Slayer doing? Death Slayer appears to have lost a shield. Oh, because he opened it up to do something, didn't he? Don't do that, Death Slayer. You're only opening yourself up to counterattack. There's no need for that, although you did take out his defenses at this point. Wait a second, what? What is this thing, then? PIC, he had two fighters. Seriously, what what is this thing then? Because it doesn't have any heavy weapons. I can't imagine they'd use a heavy cruiser as a commando transport. That just seems to be absurd to me. Well, our faces are ready to go once we, since we get in range. Yeah, just the Death Slayer has just been running rings around him. The only damage he's actually taken is because he dropped his shields to beam assault teams over for who knows what reason. So we're just going to get in there, use our heavy phasers. PICX. Is this a transport? A heavy cruiser troop transport? Because he just doesn't have any fighters worth any description. He had two. And then he's got no heavy weapons. He doesn't even have a lot of phasers. He's got six plus the two Gs, but who cares? Alright, Testament. Um, all weapons. That did it. ESG's to on, please. There they go. So once again, smashing through enemy space. I don't know why the PIC exists. I gotta look that up at some point just to figure out what the heck's going on with that thing because that was weird. Alrighty, that's gonna do it for today's episode. We have secured this entire lower corner of the enemy empire and are now working to try and cut the two colonies off from each other. If we can get 413 and 213 so that they can't communicate, can't contact, and can't send reinforcements to each other, then we'll be in an excellent position. And we've been promoted to Fleet Admiral. Anyway, I've been Tarek. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to see the notification every time I post one of these videos, press that little bell icon, leave a comment, and I will see you all in the next episode.